final mystery was, how did a lady born... Passengers on this flight survive when all the engines failed on their plane. We try and piece together the clues behind a very strange case of poisoning. Will you work it out? And what really goes on in your head when you're dreaming? OK, then. It's hold on to your seatbelt time, because we're going to start off with the mystery of what happened to Flight 009. In 1982, a Boeing 747 aeroplane was flying to Australia. It was being piloted by Captain Moody, a pilot with 18 years' experience, and he had an equally experienced crew. Jim, any news on weather conditions in Perth? Uh, yes, Captain, the weather's just come through and we're clear all the way to Perth. Lovely. The weather report was fine, and as with any such a routine flight, Captain Moody had already switched to automatic pilot. There you are, Maddie. Thank, Thank you. So much. Much. No, Meanwhile, in the cabin, the passengers made themselves comfortable while they settled down after their meal. Jane, did you see that? Look, sparks. What on earth was that? Looks like it an electrical storm. The forecast is fine, sir. What's that funny smell? What the...? Suddenly, a strange blue mist appeared in the aircraft. The captain immediately ordered the passengers to put their seatbelts on. As the stewardess walked down the aisle to check everyone was wearing their seatbelts, the passengers nearest the window sensed that something was happening. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. Joan, do you think that engine's glowing? Yeah. Up front, things were getting worse. Well, number four engines lit up from inside. So has number two. <laughs> number four engine's failed, sir. Fire action number four engine. Fire action number four engine. The pilot remained calm. He could easily fly the plane with only three engines working. Number two's gone as well, sir. And one, and three. All the engines are out. They all looked out of the window in desperation for some sort of explanation. Mayday, mayday, mayday. Jakarta Control. All four engines have failed. Without power, the plane was gliding downwards at 2,000 feet a minute towards the shark-infested waters below. Mayday, mayday, mayday. Repeat. All four engines have failed. So what was going on? How had a routine flight turned into such a terrible emergency? And where did those sparks come from? And what about the smell? And why had all those engines failed? Now, if you'd have been the pilot, what would you have done? So what did happen to Flight 009? Jim, information checklist. Information checklist. Control. control. You Mayday. 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 Captain Moody used all his experience to keep gliding the plane downward while the crew kept trying to restart the engines. Restarting, nothing's happening. Don't panic. Be calm. Remember the test position. Back in the cabin, the passengers were terrified. The crew had started to prepare for an emergency landing at sea. Assume the correct position when I tell you. But then, as quickly as the electrical storm started, the plane suddenly seemed to fly clear. Force back, sir. Force back. Great. Give me the rest. The crew anxiously waited. And two and three's back, sir. Two and three's back. There we go. It's stabilising. And one is running as well. Yes. All four engines were up and running. The captain was back in control. He pulled up the plane and headed to the nearest airport to make a safe landing. Confirm all four engines have restarted. Charter control. All four engines have restarted. Can I have your attention, please? The captain has announced we have all four engines back. <laughs> Well done. Well done, everyone. Good story. And it's true. It did actually happen in 1982 to flight 009 to Australia. Now, all the crew and passengers landed safely at Jakarta Airport in Indonesia 20 minutes after the engines first went out. But OK, what had happened? Well, unknown to the ground control people and the flight crew, Flight 009 had flown over an erupting volcano, which was violently spewing ash and grit eight miles into the air. And this was creating a vast storm of thick, hot gases and high electrical activity. Now, those volcanic gases and the grit and the ash had actually caused the plane's engines to seize up. 
Now, when the plane drifted down into cleaner air, the thick layers of dust were blown clear of the engines, which meant they could be restarted. Phew. You play together. I'm telling you, seriously, <laughs> honestly. All right then, here's one for you, and I promise it's not a trick. It's a mystery how last night I danced with the Spice Girls, <laughs> I had dinner with the Prime Minister, I did, and I spent a million okay. pounds all in the space of a few minutes. Oh, well, it's too good to be true. It's got to be a trick. And Neil, no offence, love you loads, but the Spice Girls wouldn't want to dance with you, mate. <laughs> love you loads too. Oh, thanks. Uh, what do you think? Well, for a start, there isn't a catch, you know. Not when you're dreaming. Mm. Yeah, I've, I've had that Spice Girls dream, the dancing thing. <laughs> Boy. Well, you know, dreaming, when you think about it, is the greatest show on Earth. The cinema of the mind. No tickets are required, and admission is free. Good night. But what exactly are dreams? And why do we have them? What's going on inside your head when you dream? What do they all mean? Have you ever dreamt that you're running away from something? It might mean that you'd quite like to escape from a situation that you don't like. If you're running towards something, it can mean that you've got certain dreams that have yet to come true. And if you're trying to run but you're having difficulty, it means that you're lacking self-confidence and you might be a bit worried about something. And what about going to school in your dreams? Anyone at any age can dream that they're back at school. Dreaming that you're turning up late or unprepared for an important exam is a common dream. It happens when you're facing something important and that you're worried about failing. Not just an exam, but anything in life. And have you ever dreamt of being unable to speak? It could mean that you are nervous about speaking your mind in front of people, and it could also mean that you're perhaps a little clumsy. Oh, you give get more names. It's about enjoying that. Mm. <laughs> so, okay then, why do we dream? Well, some experts think that dreams may be just the mind's junkyard, a sort of a way of sorting out the day's events, you know, storing the important things and throwing out the clutter as a dream. But the truth is, we still don't really know what they're all about. Dreams remain a complete mystery. But what we do know is that you dream about every hour and a half when you're sleeping. So you usually have about four or five dreams a night. Hey, and why not start a dream diary? Now, most of the time we can't remember what we've dreamt, but if you do remember a dream, you've got to jot it down quickly before you forget it. And your dream diary can then be used to analyse your dreams. And a single dream mightn't reveal much, but when you compare it with another, it might just make sense. OK, so if you've made a note of your dreams, how do you actually go about finding out what they mean? Mm. Well, you can actually look them up in books or a dream dictionary. In fact, some dreams and their possible explanations can be really, really funny. But whatever your dreams, experts agree that dreaming is good for you. So enjoy them. After all, that's the only place where Neil could dance with the Spice Girls, oh, have dinner with sure. the Prime Minister and spend a million pounds all in one day. That's for sure. <laughs> What happens if a fly lands on a ship? Does the ship sink a little bit and slow down? Or does it have no effect on the ship at all? Or does the ship have to retune its radar system because the fly causes interference? What do you think? Well, believe it or not, a fly weighs about 0.04 grams. So when it lands on the ship, the ship gets a tiny bit heavier, which displaces a tiny amount of water, which in turn does actually slow the boat down. <laughs> All right, we've got one for you, oh big guy. Right. Keep yeah. the eyes closed. What's Just going on? Move it along. No Just going to have eyes Over closed. Go. Over oh. you go. What? All right, stop, now stop. open them. Oh. It's a mystery why there is a figure of a dead man lying on the floor of this room. Right, Neil, you have got to try and solve the mystery of the dead man. He was in this room 
when he died, okay? You can ask me interest in anything you like, and we can answer only yes or no. And you understand? Don't, don't you understand? forget you're up against the clock, and your time starts now. Up against the clock? Yep. Oh, challenge, challenge. Okay, um, there's no sign of a forced entry because the door and the window are open, so was there an intruder who committed a murder? No. Nope. Oh. <laughs> um, oh, it looks very old-fashioned in here. The decor, the furniture, uh, newspaper, any dates on it? 1821, so did something happen in the 1800s? Yes. Great, uh, 1800s. Um, uh, uh, oh, medical stuff here, powders, pills. So did someone die of a hideous illness or a disease like the plague or something? No. <laughs> uh, you're enjoying this, aren't you? Uh, books, books. But, oh, the foreign books, uh, foreign language, French. Oh, and the newspaper was in French, so was the person in France? Certainly French. was. French, 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 French. OK. Um, uh, uniform, boots, hat, trickle a hat. Come on, uh, come uniform, on. Yeah. Uh, You've started, so you may finish, Neil. Oh, right then. Was, was that the buzzer then? <laughs> Did you like that? I've you're been working up as you're going along, aren't you? <laughs> right then, I've started, so I'll finish. Um, so there's a uniform, a military uniform. So did the person die of injuries they received at war? No. <laughs> you are enjoying this, aren't you? So come on, spill the beans. How did the person die? Well, you were right about the date. He did die in 1821, as you said, and also you were right about the fact that he was French. Mm -hmm. The guy who died in this room actually lived in this room. He was continually suffering from things like stomach pains, diarrhoea, shivering, swollen limbs, hence the reason for all the medicines over there. Yeah, but hang on. You said they didn't die of an illness or the plague, so if they didn't die of a disease or something, how did they die? Well, it turns out that he was poisoned by... Arsenic. Arsenic? Hold on, you two are cheating. There was no bottles of arsenic in here. And if there was no bottles in here, how did he get poisoned with arsenic? Well, nobody knows for sure, Neil, but the chief suspect turns out to be the wallpaper. <laughs> 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 oh, that's it then, isn't it? Mystery solved. The wallpaper kills person with arsenic. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, it's not all made up. The man who died was the French Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte. After he was defeated in the Battle of Waterloo, he was sent to live in exile. As I said earlier, he'd spent a lot of time in his room. All the things he was complaining of, the stomach pains, the swollen limbs, the shivering, the diarrhea, they're all symptoms of arsenic poisoning. And in fact, recent, in recent years, scientists have been able to analyze samples and strands of Napoleon's hair, and they've discovered that they do actually contain high levels of the poison arsenic. Mm. So, okay, <laughs> I buy that Napoleon was killed by arsenic poisoning, but where does the wallpaper come in, then? Well, the wallpaper in Napoleon's bedroom had green patterns on it. And in those days, the green dye that they used was made of copper arsenate or arsenic. And some experts believe that that could have been what killed him. You're joking. So does that mean we've got to run out and redecorate immediately, then? <laughs> no, definitely not. Don't panic, Neil. The, the, the poisonous green colouring isn't used in paints or wallpaper anymore, so you don't have to worry. So hold on, <laughs> let me get this right then. Napoleon was killed by arsenic poisoning and the chief suspect was the wallpaper. Yep. Yeah, so they say. Hello, my name is Maurice Bone and I live in Bognor Regis, West Sussex. I've served 22 years with the Fleet Air Arm and travelled the world. My wife Barbara and I wrote letters to each other every day. On the 4th of July 1959, while I was in Malta, Barbara was at home. She addressed a black and white postcard with seven small views of Bognor Regis to me in Malta. This postcard reached me in Malta on the 7th of July 1959. So, OK, what's the mystery? A woman in this country sends her husband a postcard. No mystery there, I hear you say. Well, it turns out that he then gave the card away to someone in Malta. And I can guarantee you'll be amazed at what happened next. 34 years later, in 1993, my wife had joined the Bognor Regis Local History Society. She became an avid collector of Bognor Regis postcards. It was while we were on holiday in St Ives, around 200 miles from home, that we found another pile of old Bognor postcards in an antique shop. We didn't bother sorting them, we just threw them into a carrier bag for sorting later. About six months later, Barbara finally got round to sorting the cards. She picked up the third one, turned it over to see some very familiar writing. We couldn't believe it. It suddenly occurred to us that we were looking at the card 
that Barbara had sent to me in Malta 34 years ago. What an amazing story. A postcard travels over two and a half thousand miles and turns up 34 years later in the hands of the person who wrote it. Just think about it. What are the chances of that sort of thing happening? Give me the hiccup, she just <laughs> All right, then. Here's a mystery for all of us. How do you stop hiccups? I hate having hiccups. <laughs> I hate that. You can't get rid of them. It's an absolute killer. No. Well, first of all, we should establish what hiccup is. Now, when you breathe, there's a muscle that pulls down the chest and lets the air in from your windpipe to your lungs. This muscle is actually your diaphragm. Here it is here. And it works like this. You breathe in and out. In and out. But if this muscle gets irritated in any way, you know like when you get a, a muscle twitch in your leg or your yeah, eye? Yeah, yeah. Well, instead of your normal deep breath, without wanting to, you suddenly take in sharp little breaths like this, which can reach your lungs, so you poop! <laughs> Precisely! <laughs> and you can often get hiccups after you've eaten or drunk too much because your tummy swells and knocks against your diaphragm and that irritates it. So, okay guys, hang on. How do you stop them? Is there such a thing as a reliable cure? Because, you know, it seems to me that everyone has their own little pet ways mm. of trying to stop hiccups. Mm. Well, that's true. And personally, I think that by holding my breath... <gasps> <laughs> well, you see, I think that stopping the oxygen should stop my hiccups. Really? Because my old um, Scottish grandmother used to tell yeah, me that, yeah, uh, yeah. that if I drink a glass of water back to front, it should do the trick. Like, mm, mm. Yeah. It um, presses up against the front of your throat. Is that true? That does it Bound for me. to be yeah? true because it's a Scottish, Scottish grandmother. Oh. Hey, hey, other people swear by having a big fright. Oh. <laughs> Neil, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> now, you know, I reckon the reason that that might work is because it sort of tricks your brain into forgetting about the head. Hey, hang on. What about, try this for me. What about the, the standing on one leg? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. Putting your right finger in your left ear. Right, yeah. your left ear. And yeah. your left hand yeah. on your right ankle. The ankle, on the ankle. Okay, yeah. Tristan, this can't possibly work. <laughs> I know, but it's great watching you try. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very much, boys. And what about the holding your breath, drinking cold water backwards and having a big fright? Do they work? Well, I don't know, you know. What do you think? Do any of these things work for stopping your hiccups? Well, if they don't, here's the good news, because your hiccups actually stop naturally when the diaphragm relaxes and you can breathe normally again. Okay, well, try this one. How long does it normally take you to get rid of your hiccups? Five or six minutes. Yeah, ten Not minutes long. tops. Yeah, six or seven <clears> minutes <throat> for me. I once hiccuped non-stop for an hour. No. Oh. Can you imagine right. that? Did yeah. you feel very ill? I felt very yeah. ill, but that's nothing. Charles Osborne, a guy from America, began hiccuping in 1922, and he didn't stop until 1990. Oh, really? Can you imagine that? Oh. That's an amazing 68 years, oh. wait for it, without a cure. Well, that's it for this week. Some mysteries we've solved and some remain unsolved. But we've got to go now because Gail thinks she's getting hiccups. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, she'll be all right by next week. But until then, here's one last one for you. A bus driver was on his way to work. He managed to go through a red light and turn down a one-way street in the wrong direction. So how come the policeman watching him ignored it? Can you solve the mystery? We'll reveal the answer next time. See you then. <laughs> Bye. See ya. <laughs> Last week's closing mystery was, how did a man survive after falling off a 60-foot ladder whilst cleaning the windows of a skyscraper? And the answer is, he was only standing on the bottom rung when he fell off.